Hi, my name is Karen Wiley and I'm here to share my experience of breastfeeding a child with a complex medical condition. My daughter Runa has the rare genetic condition Acardi syndrome, which affects roughly 4,000 people worldwide. It predominantly affects girls and it consists of epilepsy and various uh, developmental disabilities. Before I go into how this condition has affected my and my daughter's breastfeeding journey, I will let you know a little bit about the condition itself. So the classic diagnostic triad of the Cardi syndrome is a genesis of the corpus callosum, infantile spasms and chorioretinal lacunae. Though there are individuals who have been diagnosed with the condition without one or two of these, it is the classic triad. I'll explain a little bit more about uh, each feature. A genesis of the corpus callosum means that the structure that connects the two hemispheres of the brain is either missing or, in my daughter's case, partially missing. Chorioretinal lacunae is a hallmark of Accardi syndrome and it means there's scars at the back of the eye which uh, can affect vision, it can cause blindness, partial sightedness, um, and in my daughter's case, it has not affected her vision. The two scars in her left eye are not in the vision seeing part of the eye, which is very fortuitous. And lastly, um, to diagnose a Cardi syndrome, a child should usually be displaying infantile spasms, although uh, children with a Cardi syndrome will almost definitely have other seizure types such as tonic colonic seizures and focal seizures. Uh, with Accardi syndrome, there are uh, almost always other brain malformations and physical abnormalities. For Runa, she has polymicrogyria, which means that the folds in her brain are, there's areas where they're uh, too small and there's too many of them. She has heterotopic grey matter nodules, which are areas of grey matter that have developed normally, but in the wrong place. And she has distorted ventricles. These three, along with the genesis of the corpus callosum, can contribute to epilepsy. She's also missing a set of ribs. So obviously with any condition, each individual uh, has their own unique way of developing. Um, however, parents with children with Accardi syndrome can expect uh, varying degrees of um, speech issues, mobility problems, um, often children have reoccurring chest infections which very sadly uh, lead to lower life expectancy and uh, what's very apparent is feeding problems. Uh, many children and adults with Accardi syndrome will be tube fed and uh, peg fed directly into their stomach. Um, and those who aren't uh, are likely to experience issues with uh, chewing and swallowing. Um, this, of course, leads nicely to Runa's issues with feeding. So Runa was not diagnosed with Accardi syndrome until she was 17 weeks old. Until that point, we had noticed some developmental delays, but as, of course, as every child is different, it wasn't something we were overly concerned about. Uh, now, with the uh, advantage of hindsight, we can obviously see how these were all, uh, all these issues that we had with feeding were leading up to what was indeed the bigger problem. So with uh, regards to Runa originally in hospital, when she was born, I was determined to breastfeed. I breastfed her older sister for a year and I was intending to do the same with Runa. Uh, it was very difficult at first, she wouldn't latch, but with the support of a midwife who started her on formula very briefly and then quickly latched onto my breast, I was able to get it somewhat established. Um, it was a very long journey, it was very difficult. Uh, when I was nursing her, she, because of quite low tone, it was quite hard for her to hold herself up when she was breastfeeding. And uh, also she wouldn't keep her airways clear, clear, so I had to move my breast away from her nose, otherwise she could have effectively uh, suffocated herself. And it took a long, long time to establish this breastfeeding. Um, if she had been my first child, I'm not sure if I would have continued because it was very difficult with bouts of mastitis and uh, lots of sleepless nights and tears. Um, we gradually got to grips and breastfeeding was going pretty well and then at 17 weeks 
uh, shortly before I was planning to have a chat with my health visitor about Runa's uh, slow development, Runa started having seizures. We went to our local hospital uh, in Larbert where she was uh, given a CT scan where they discovered uh, these brain malformations. Uh, so we were sent to Glasgow Children's Hospital where uh, further tests were done, um, MRI and EEG and an eye exam which uh, all led to the diagnosis of Acardi syndrome. So it was a very difficult time uh, going from feeling that I had this perfect, happy, healthy baby to being told that uh, my child had a condition that could be potentially life-threatening. It was very, very difficult and very, very stressful. I uh, went through grief, I had panic attacks, I was very, very sad and very, very low. In fact, I don't think I've ever been lower in my life. Uh, during this time, um, it was advised to me to move Runa on to formula milk um, to give me the opportunity for a little bit of respite and to take care of my mental health. They were quite keen to prescribe me things that I wouldn't be able to take uh, whilst breastfeeding. Um, but I felt deep down, even though there was a part of me that knew that this was good advice, it wasn't bad advice, um, but I knew it wasn't right for us. I think if I'd been able to relinquish that uh, bond, that control with my daughter, it would have been quite easy to push her away and uh, give other people the responsibility that uh, was solely mine. Um, and though it was difficult, I knew uh, through all the grief and through all the stress that for Runa, it was the best thing to do. The next obstacle came uh, when Runa was moved onto steroids to treat her infantile spasms. Uh, the steroids made her hunger insatiable. It was like having a newborn again, constant feeding. It was very, very tiring. Um, in this time, the hospital staff uh, sourced me a breast pump and my uh, sister-in-law gave me some of her express milk so that Runa could have, I think in total, over the few weeks, she had three bottles of express milk. Um, and the rest of the time, it was completely me. Um, as Runa... Uh, came off the steroids as time went by once we were out of hospital and as she moved on to solids and we got into a bit of a routine uh, nursing turned back into the lovely experience that I always wanted it to be those first few months even the, the you know the initial get-go was very slow and very difficult and quite painful and then obviously with the diagnosis um, it was it was not the easiest uh, experience, but I am very, very glad I continued to nurse Runa. I feel that it's one of the contributing factors to saving our bond. And uh, now she's 14 months old and we are uh, on to one feed a day, which I'm fairly reluctant to drop because it makes drinking coffee in the morning considerably easier. But uh, it, it's um, get, getting towards the time where we are going to be calling an end to it. Um, what this experience has taught me though is that uh, nursing a child with complex medical needs is very unusual. Um, when I was in hospital, uh, every nurse that came in to check on Runa's obs to uh, make notes about her would always ask how many bottles has she had today. And obviously there's a high turnover with nurses so uh, during uh, sessions so obviously they wouldn't all necessarily remember that Runa doesn't have bottles of milk, she has breast milk. Um, but it was just the presumption that she was having formula. Uh, nursing assistants who would provide uh, food and milk for the children would come in and ask if I needed any more bottles. And again, uh, she doesn't have bottles of milk, she's breastfed. Um, and even though I was recommended to move on to formula, uh, this happened quite regularly in my hospital stay and after I left hospital as well. And again, the advice wasn't meant in any hurtful way. It was all uh, designed to, for me to take care of myself. Um, I felt that obviously breastfeeding was a very precious thing to me, that I was very reluctant to give up. And um, it began to feel a little bit undermining at follow-up appointments for Runa, uh, the paediatricians would automatically ask how many bottles of milk Runa would have a day. Um, it was not expected that she'd be breastfed. It was indeed seen as abnormal. 
Not that anyone ever said I was doing the wrong thing. Uh, of course, I was always met with support, but surprise. Um, which I think is a shame because whatever whatever choice a mum makes about feeding her child, it should breastfeeding should always be as normal, if not more normal, than uh, formula milk. And uh, when you're in a situation where everything is quite alien and is quite scary, having uh, that choice almost undermines that it's it's abnormal, that it's not what everyone else would be doing. Um, it's a strange feeling. Um, but as I say, I'm very proud of myself for my perseverance with it and I would encourage any mother who's passionate about breastfeeding, uh, despite uh, the condition of her child, whether they are completely healthy or do have complex needs, if it's something you're passionate about, there's a lot of support out there and stick your foot down and go for it. Equally, if um, breastfeeding is something you feel passionate about, but uh, the health of your child and yourself, uh, it becomes very difficult, then also feel fully supported in making different choices. Um, my journey with my daughter, I'm always very keen to raise awareness about Acardi syndrome, so if you would like to follow me on Twitter, if anyone is interested, at my strong room. I also have a link to my blog there where I put regular updates about our life with my daughter. Um, and I hope that you found this very informative. Thank you.